Right, with this one we've got a convert to magneto ignition. So instead of having a coil and a distributor, which generates the spark with the battery, this generates its own spark all on its own. Okay. Um, so normally you'd have your distributor in there, you have a power lead where it comes from the battery, goes up to your ignition switch, out of the ignition switch when you click it on, back down to the coil, yeah? The other side of the coil goes to the distributor. When your point's open and shut, that's called your low tension side, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that tells the coil when, to, when those points do open and shut, that tells the coil when to spark. Harley's work on a lost spark system, so you have two plug leads coming out, much the same as that, but on a coil. So they both spark at the same time. It just depends how the engine's timed up. So you always call what's called a lost spark system. <coughs> so you don't, we're gonna run the battery anyway for the lighting system and your charging system, but you don't need a coil and you don't need a distributor. It's all housed in this, yeah? Okay. So the way that works. Right, so that rotates that way. As that turns, there's a set of points in there, a coil and an armature which generates the current. See it spark then? Mm, yep. Yeah. So we know it's sparking, so that's generating enough current. What it'll probably need to do, it might take a little while to start it up but then it re-energizes itself. Okay. It, everything has got current going through it and it all dries out, picks up. Probably hasn't been run for years and years and years. But ideally, you want that helical gear to engage with the gear, comes off the scavenge pump drive, yeah? At the right height. They're set, because it's standard Harley part, yeah? That, you put him on there, so he's short there. Yeah. So what I've done, I've made a bush up to centralise it in the casing, because your normal, you, your normal distributor sits down, sits down in that hole, yeah? Yeah. So that will centralise that shaft, because that shaft's bigger. So that piece there, Fits, fitted down in the engine casing. All oh, right, yeah. Obviously, we had to make a space right because otherwise, that's just going to be flopping around everywhere. Yeah. So the aluminium plate I've put on top there takes up the difference in the heights. Yeah. Yeah. So that should be engaging in the right place. Sure. Right now, what I've got to do is you've got to make something to hold that in there bolt up through there pin up through there washer on the top um probably with a slot in it spring loaded so your dizzy can't jump out or the magneto can't jump out but it's got to allow you movement to move it like that for your advance and retard yeah okay so what i'm going to do I don't quite know how I'm going to make that yet because you've got to be able to get round to the back there because there's one on the back. Something, like I say, I'll probably have to make... Because I'm not sure, I couldn't find any pictures of this style of magneto. It's got a rev counter coming, or a speedo drive, or a rev counter drive coming off the back of it as well. I mean, those two big holes are only there to allow you to bolt that on, yeah? So it would have run on a slot there. So I might make up some little pieces of metal that just fit in there, yeah? And then make a slotted plate that goes over the top, then spring load it all in there. But you've got to be able to get around the back, so you can't get to those two screws to screw it in yeah. after it's assembled. So that's my challenge for today. Because that, obviously, when that's on there, that lets you move it, yeah? But you've also got to work out 
exactly where the points are opening to make it fire on the front cylinder on the lobe on the back here so what I might have to do is build a stop on here or something because when it hits there you want it exactly on the firing point yeah. so it's a bit of brainstorming messing about because you because you, your your stop that normally is on there for a distributor you can't use it's just all in the way so normally you have that that goes on the inlet valve tap it yeah and that is your stop so as you do the twist the advance and retard yeah that yeah. stops it oh i see but we haven't got any of that we've also got to make something up that will hold the cable so i think what i'll probably do that won't sit around the band around the base of that distributor because it just doesn't fit so i think i'll take the band off take the coil out the inside of the magneto and drill and tap that brass piece into there yeah then that will let my cable come in through there and move it does that make sense yeah so like i say it's a bit of brainstorming trying to work out exactly how to do it but the basics of it are there now you know just by machining that up what's the benefits of a magneto over a battery then or a magneto over a coil if your battery's flat it'll start you don't need a battery the only reason you're running a battery on this is for lighting right that's it yeah i mean you can leave the ignition off kickstart it and it'll go but what we need to do i'll try and work out as i said in in the ignition switch there's a spare post for your blackout marker lamp <coughs> now if i can i'm not sure if i can do it if i can reverse engineer it reverse wire it that one there so which way up is it that way that's ignition on that's lights on if you run that wire there that's just screwed to the side of the magneto yeah so with this was running the way you stop it is just touch that on there yeah and that will stop it yeah so if we can wire it up somehow i don't quite know how yet i've got to get my brain into gear so that when it's in that position off yeah that is earthed out okay because then it don't matter how much you kick it it won't go yeah. because that's earthed out onto there as yeah. such with the switch in that position what we need to do is when it goes to first click which is ignition that breaks that contact yeah. so that will spark when you kick it but i've got to work out in here how to do it if indeed you can do it because that one whichever one it is that one yeah that one is spare that's that only works yeah that powers that to that which is on auxiliary which is your marker lamp on the front but we don't want to do that because that pin there must be powered up all the time i would say don't know i can't remember i'm gonna to have to look at a wiring diagram but that per se is a spare contact so if i can drill don't know if you're going to do it or not because everything's powered up separately you don't you can't have power going through that terminal you might just have to put a toggle switch on it or, or something i don't know yet i was thinking maybe you could split that wire because that's a feed from the generator side to the coil 
No, she'd still be putting lives through it. You can't do that. Okay. I don't know. As I say, it's a bit of a... bit of a got to sit down and think about it and try and work it out, you know? But we'll get there. Might just have to have a toggle switch hidden somewhere, you know, a little tiny switch. Yeah. Right, what they do, the good old hillbillies, you have, you put it there, start your bike, and they have a big spring on here. Okay. And you just go like that, clip the spring on it. Okay. That holds it. But Craig wants it to move, so. But, which is actually relevant, to be honest with you, because it's still making this thing, when you kick it over, it'll just spit it out because of the way the helical gear works mm. so it needs to be a strong enough little spring in there to hold it and i don't like i say i can't find any pictures of this style of mag but the basics are there so got loads and loads of little bolts and springs and machining bits on the lay we'll get there because whatever you put in there it's got to be countersunk or threaded down from that way because you haven't got any room under the back on the other side. Sod's law, you can only just get to it from there, but you can't change the orientation. Something in there. Is that right? No. You can't change the orientation of those screws see they're all off-centered so you can't turn that round anywhere i suppose you could do if you re-drill it and thought of that yeah that might be an idea because if that way then because you're never going to get to anything at the back of that if i re-drill that and bring that round there that gives me easy access to the two points yeah you would do It'd be a lot easier, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. It is a bit of the old lid, look. Right, so there are your points on the top. Small over your front cylinder. So you time that up so those points are just opening when that's on its full stop that way. Yeah? I had to move that condenser around because it was hitting the the cap um, yeah I might be able to move that we'll have a look at that that's your power from there yeah so can you see that bit that rotates yeah. inside there so that's generating the power that piece in there comes up to the points comes out of the points and splits there and there yeah mm -hmm. so that inherently earth that out you're not getting any power to the coil that's how you turn it on and off now that one had a switch in the top so you could literally turn the power on or off but we haven't got a key for it which is a bummer because that would have been ideal just to drill back into the lid you can't jack the lock on it don't think you'd ever get anything <coughs> small enough to be honest with you does it need to be a lock or just a keyed on or off you can do it with a toggle switch but there's no security in it at all somebody just walk up to it flick the switch and start it can you put a secondary security in it or something not really no that's what i'm saying if you could even if you could get it to work on the top switch you ain't got a key for it anyway so you can't lock it well, no Harleys work on no key, do they? So. Yeah, some do. I mean, that's got a key. I mean, m m majority of the WLA. Oh, no, 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 no. No, none of them have it, no. So, maybe I'm overthinking it. But if you had a, if you had a secondary switch, hidden switch, that would be security enough, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. So if you had a hidden switch, which would just switch that earth on and off, then no yeah, one could start it unless they knew. Somewhere. Then no one could start it unless they knew where that hidden switch was, could they? No. You could put a little one in the back of the headlamp so it looked like a headlamp switch. Yeah, we could put it in there, couldn't we? Hmm. The only 
you've got a drill hole in the back, put two wires in. So a little flick switch, it's hidden then, isn't it? Yeah. All you've got to do when you want to start is flick that up, flick the switch. Yeah. That's probably favourite, isn't it? I think so. Well, it's not exposed, you can't see it on the outside, can you? Yeah, I think we'll do that. That way all I've got to do is run that wire through there somewhere, up along here, through the frame, down with that lot, and just tuck him in there. Because the other wire just goes to earth, that's it. Possibly a bit of a pain in the ass when you want to stop it, but but it's hidden and it's out of the way, isn't it? And if Craig doesn't like it, it's very, very easy to dis un disconnect, you know, unwire. It's not so much... Well, what, is, that, is that how you'd switch the bike off then? Yeah. The only, the only way you can switch them off is yeah. by earthing it out. Unless you just put it in first gear, put your foot on all the brakes and pop the clutch and stall it. But that's not a good idea. 